Hey, Math 8. Today we are doing 4.2, uh, which is talking about relations. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Um, it's not too long of a lesson, but we're going to jump down to the second page on page 278. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started here. So it says um, a relation is any set of ordered pairs. Um, so we see that kind of, whoops, uh, we kind of see that right here with our set of ordered pairs. Um, and then it's also, there. we've got a table and a graph. These are other ways of representing ordered pairs as well, or sorry, relations as well. So really any of these are relations. Um, yeah, so um, the main things for uh, this section right here are the domain and the range. Okay, those are pretty important for you to know. Um, basically, the domain just means your x values. All right. While your range is your y values. Okay, so that is pr that is the main thing that you need to know um, off of this part of the notes. Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump straight down to example one. So it says express the relation, and then it gives all the ordered pairs as a table and a graph, then state the domain and the range. Okay, so um, we have the uh, table given to us here. Um, we don't even have to do anything with it. All right, so we have um, the point two six the point negative four, negative eight, the point negative three, six, and the point zero, negative four. You'll notice the first one is always listed under x. Um, that's something we should know. The first um, number is always your x value, while the second number is always your y value. Okay. Um, and then they also graph it for us as well here. So we've got, and I'll just kind of color over each one real quick. We've got the point two, six right here the point negative four, negative eight right here. We have the point negative three, six up here. <clears throat> and the point zero, negative four right here. Okay, there's our four points. All right, again, this is another way of representing the same relation. All right. All right, so then after we look at that graph, we've also got the domain and the range listed for us. Again, you're gonna notice that the domain is all of your x values, okay, and the range is all of your y values, okay. Um, there are a couple of things to notice along with this, okay. First of all, you'll notice all of the um, values are listed in order from least to greatest. So if you look at your x values, negative 4 is the least of all these, then negative 3, then 0, then 2 is the greatest of all of them. Okay, um, And then the same thing for y, it goes negative 8, then negative 4, then 6. All right, So it's not in the same order that they were up here or up here. Um, they just put them in the order of least to greatest. Okay, The other thing to notice is if you look at the y's, um, there's only three numbers there, even though there's four numbers up here. So why is that? Well, basically, it's because we have six twice, okay? When you state your domain and your range, you only have to list each number once, okay? So um, sometimes you'll end up with a number that shows up twice. You only have to put it once when you list your domain and range. Okay, so I have that written over here um, on the right side for you now. Um, so yeah, if you want to copy that, copy that down, um, that wouldn't be a bad idea. All right. Um, you'll also notice really quick, there's brackets like this. Um, when you look at your domain and range, you've got your little squiggly brackets. Okay. Um, that's just how we, um, note, notate, I guess, annotate, um, our domain and range. Okay. So um, you should be doing that when you write them. The way to make those is if you just do an S, all right, and then you just flip it upside down and do an upside down S. That's that side. And then you can do the same thing on this side. 
Um, it's just going to be the upside down or the backwards first and then normal us. Okay. Um, that's how you do the squiggly brackets. Um, I just remember when I learned that, I had to have someone teach me how to do that because I could not for the life of me uh, <laughs> draw those correctly. So, but yeah, that's what those are. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to got it problem A on page 279. And I want you to go ahead and do that on your own. Um, and notice it does say to state the domain and range. Make sure you're doing that over here as well when you do it. Okay. Um, sorry, I thought I paused it. I did not. So um, once you have done got it problem A, stated your domain and range, you can move on um, to example two. All right. Um, and actually, we're, we're going to go ahead and skip it because it's pretty much the exact same thing as example one. Um, sorry, I got a little bit confused on my plan there. But yeah, we're not going to go. We're not going to do example two. We'll just go ahead and skip past it. And we're going to skip past the got it problem for that one as well, which means uh, we are done for this video lesson. So um, it's real short and sweet for us today. So hopefully you understand everything. If not, make sure you ask me questions. Hopefully you got everything written down. Um, and then I will see you guys in class.